Multi-version concurrency control is an attempt to increase concurrency by reducing the wait time for reading each object. It also works using timestamps, but different than the other timestamp-based protocols that we have seen. Each successful write results in creation of a new version of the data item written with a new write timestamp that labels that new version. When a read operation is issued, we select an appropriate version of the object based on the timestamp of the transaction issuing the read request and the write value of the selected version. The protocol to enforce the conditions of versioning to implement this basic idea could be chosen in different ways. We can achieve it using locks or timestamp ordering protocol. In this way, the read operations never have to wait, as an appropriate write version is always returned immediately. This helps performance, and the cost that we have to pay to gain this performance is having to maintain different versions of the same object. Another concept that you might come across in concurrency control is multi-granularity. Multi-granularity is used with locking and is based on the idea of setting locks on objects that contain other objects. For example, a database contains several files. A file is a collection of pages, and a page is a collection of records. So, if a transaction wants to access different pages of the same file, it is probably best to lock the file and the smaller granularities will inherit the lock. We can show the hierarchy of object granularities using a tree. For example, hierarchy of objects, including database, area, file, and record is shown in this figure. When we set a lock on a node explicitly, all the child nodes of that node which are finer granularity objects contained by that object, inherit the lock implicitly. The higher the concurrency needs of our system, the lower in the tree we should go, towards the branches. The lower in the tree, the higher overhead we might accept as a trade-off for this choice. Similarly, the coarser the granularity, the higher in the tree. The lower locking overhead, and the achieved concurrency. While implementing lock and unlock operations, we need to ensure they are atomic. In order to do that, access to lock table and locked objects need to be controlled. While semaphores can help on multi-instance access of concurrency control to the control resources such as lock table, latches and convoys are used to control access to physical resources. Latches are short duration locks set during physical read or write of objects to disk to ensure atomicity. A situation called convoy happens when most of CPU cycles are spent on process switching. A queue for acquiring locks, also called convoy, can help alleviate the situation. What we discussed here was mainly for disk-based database management systems. However, it is still fairly applicable to in-memory database systems as well. In-memory databases access data objects faster because they are in main memory. Therefore, it might be acceptable to perform operations such as locking and unlocking in a coarser granularity to reduce the overhead introduced to the operations. Also, latch-free techniques that remove the need for locking and unlocking on database read and writes can be used to speed up operations even further. When working with SQL, some level of control over the overhead caused by concurrency control is in hands of the programmer. Programmer can set access mode, diagnostic size, and isolation level. Access mode is either read-only or read-write. It can affect performance of concurrency control. Because, for example, in read-only mode, we only need shared locks. The diagnostic size determines the number of error conditions that can be recorded. And the isolation level, which is a programmer-controlled characteristic we are interested at here, 
controls the exposure of the transactions to the actions of other transactions executing concurrently. Isolation level choices are read uncommitted, read committed, repeatable read, and serializable. Serializable, implemented for example by acquiring locks and releasing them according to strict 2PL, is the most isolated level among the named. A repeatable read transaction sets the same locks as a serializable transaction, except that it does not do index locking. Therefore, a transaction under repeatable read could experience phantom problem. A read committed transaction obtains exclusive locks before writing objects and releases them at the end of the transaction. Shared locks are obtained before reading objects but released immediately. A read uncommitted transaction does not obtain shared locks before reading objects. This mode represents the greatest exposure to uncommitted changes of other transactions. How to use these modes to enhance performance and not cause a problem is the choice the programmer makes.